this time at the coast, and we have a very important question for you. How would your life change if you were absolutely certain that God was working in your life? Jerry's going to be talking about that right now. singing good today. I like that new song we, we learned there at the end. I like that one. Hope has a name. Emmanuel means God with us. Of course, that's what we're celebrating all this month. Uh, I want to thank everybody who had a big part to play in our uh, Jingle Jam on Friday night. We had the biggest crowd we've ever had. I don't know where there's, I think every kid in New Smyrna and Edgewater was here. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there were kids everywhere, uh, but we just had a great time. Uh, it's just some fun and games and a uh, had a neat time sitting outside with the fire pits and doing s'mores and watching a movie and all that kind of stuff. So all of you guys who uh, had a part in um, in putting it together, and then you guys who came and brought brought kids with you, uh, thank you very much. We appreciate that. So as uh, as Jen said, we're going to be celebrating Christmas uh, all this month and uh, looking forward to all of the things we're going to be doing here at the church. Christmas music every week um, and a tree up and the lights up and all this all this neat kind of stuff. So um, don't, don't don't everybody yell out loud or anything like that. But I just want to ask you a rhetorical question. What are you looking for during this Christmas season? We said we're going to celebrate it all month. And of course, it starts in the stores like at the end of September. But, <laughs> you know, Christmas. So, so what are you looking for this holiday season? Uh, some people, I was asking this week, uh, if you ask a kid, they say no school. You know, school's out for a couple of weeks. Break from school. Uh, other people are planning on traveling. My wife and I will be flying up to uh, Virginia during, during the Christmas season. Others just say family, whether it's getting with family or, or uh, doing things with their family. Uh, some people are looking for a specific gift that they're going to receive. Other people are looking for specific gifts that they want to give to someone uh, special this time of year. Uh, as uh, I get older, some of the things I used to think were corny, I think, are traditions now. And, and so I, I like a lot of the traditions, the, the decorating. I like that. Uh, in our family, before we, on Christmas morning, before we open our gifts, uh, we always um, read the Christmas story together. Uh, that's something that we, uh, that we do. Of course, we always look forward for, to food. There's good food uh, at Christmas, opening the gifts. Uh, let me ask you this. You can vote on this one, okay? How many of you, when you get a gift at Christmas and, you know, it's going around the room and it's your turn, whatever, you're one of those very careful openers that, that say, take the bow. And how, how, many, how many of you do that? Okay, a couple of you, a couple of strange people in here. Okay. <laughs> how many of you are rippers? Okay, there, yeah, just, you know. So that's, you know, knowing that, I don't put, and my wife will tell you this, I don't put a lot of time in wrapping gifts. Uh, you know, if the top is covered, even if the bottom isn't, that's fine. It's because it's setting down. You know, no one sees that, and they're just going to rip it up anyway. But, uh, but anyway, so uh, good, to, good to know that. But anyway, at our house, if you come to uh, where Carol and I live, we've got a bunch of uh, nativity scenes. I think we have a, a close to 80 of them now, uh, different kinds and from different countries. This one uh, is one that I, we don't remember. Carol and I were trying to remember today who gave this to us, but um, it, it, this one came from Egypt. And uh, we have some from Africa, we have some from Japan, all these kinds of things, and I'll be bringing them uh, over the next few weeks. Now, now, knowing that we have a lot of nativity scenes doesn't mean we want any more nativity <laughs> scenes. Just, just saying, okay? So uh, you buy them for yourself, and that'll be fine. You can send me a picture. That'll be good. But uh, even if you're not a super religious person, you probably have an idea about the Christmas story because everywhere you go, you see nativity scenes. Uh, you know, the secular stores, whether, you know, the all kind of, you know, TV shows, all this kind of thing. You have an idea. But here's the thing. Not all of them are accurate. accurate. <laughs> you know, uh, we have ours and ours are pretty traditional. Uh, we, we do have one that's a Veggie Tales one, which I guess would be non-traditional. Uh, but but uh, I've seen ones with cats playing the role of everybody in there and, and dogs. Uh, I even saw a Star Wars one the other day. I thought that was very sad. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, but here's the deal. Even the things we call the traditional uh, nativity scenes have their flaws. Uh, take the three wise men, for instance. Uh, if you read scripture, they were not there at the birth of Jesus. They came when he was a child, when he was a small child. So if he was born and they began to move that way, obviously they weren't there uh, that night. The Bible says they traveled quite a distance. Uh, we have no evidence from scripture that there were three. 
other than the fact that three gifts were mentioned. Uh, but we don't have any idea if somebody brought uh, one or somebody brought all three and the other two didn't, you know. We have, we have no idea of any of that. And I'm not saying that it's the nativity scenes are fake and that we shouldn't have anything to do with them. I'm just saying there's a whole lot more to the Christmas story than a lot of the characters that we usually hear and see about. So what I thought I would do this year is tell you some of the Christmas stories that involve people that aren't in the nativity scene. Okay, and uh, because there's other people that are involved, and, and and let's be honest, the same is usually true of us as well. Uh, the happy picture on your family Christmas card is not exactly how things are at your house the rest of the year. You know, we get everybody dressed up and smiling, but that's not the way it is. And as great as Christmas is, it can also be a reminder that everything is not so great. I mean, some people at Christmas time are lonely. Okay, they they've suffered they've suffered a loss. Uh, some are, you know, some it's not so great because you know that when your family gets together, there's going to be a lot of arguing going on. You know, a lot of politics or a lot of this or that going on. Uh, some people, Christmas is not so great because they can't get for people like they'd like to. They're struggling financially. Uh, for some people, Christmas isn't, isn't so great to them because it, they can think about a time, you know, there's so much that's missing. You know, I've been praying about some things and God hasn't come through, and, and He hasn't answered my prayer. So Christmas can be fun, and we love that part of it. But it can, it can also be a time where people wonder where God is. Wonder where God is and what He's up to. And why hasn't He come through this year in the way that I hoped that He would? And the nativity scene doesn't tell us all of that story. And if you've ever felt like your story was not the perfect picture story around Christmas time, I want you to know that you're in good company. And what we're going to talk about today is for you. And we're actually going to start about 40 days after Jesus was born. When Mary, Joseph, and the baby encounter a man by the name of Simeon. And before we read Simeon's story in the Bible, let me set up the scene for you. It's first century Israel. They're under Roman domination. You guys uh, kind of already know that part of it. And there's this overwhelming feeling of frustration and hopelessness among the Jewish people at this time. When the Old Testament end, the scriptures that we have, the Hebrew scripture that, that we call the Old Testament, when it ended, uh, there was a time of about 400 years before the New Testament begins uh, with, with the birth of Jesus. And these years are known as the 400 silent years. They're called this because during this time, God did not speak to people through prophets in the way that he always had. So the Jewish people had been waiting in silence for 400 years for the Messiah that God had promised them. And the Jews still believed, the faithful Jews still believed that God was somehow going to come through. But the endless waiting, I mean, you know, we think it's bad if we have to wait five minutes for something. They waited 400 years. And their hope is beginning to wear down. And, you know, the kids are hearing the story and they're saying, but... but Mom and dad told me that story, and their mom and dad told them, and, and their mom and dad told them, and God hasn't come through yet, you know? And then on top of that, like I said, it's been 400 years, and entire generations, people were born and lived their life and died, and still no word from God. And of course, during these times, there, there, were, there were the other difficulties that they faced. They were conquered over this 400-year period multiple times by Rome and Greece and Syria. Uh, thousands and thousands of Jewish people had been killed during those 400 years. Their temple was destroyed. And, and, you know, and they keep being told, but you're God's people. And, and, and it looked to them like God was nowhere to be found. And it looked to them and it felt like God had abandoned them. So it was understandable that many of the Jews had kind of given up on God ever coming through, that this was just going to be a nice story that had been passed down. And then there was a guy named Simeon. Simeon. He was a Jewish man. He was a devout believer. He believed that no matter what, that God had not abandoned his people. And in Luke 2, we read his story as well as the story of the birth of Jesus that we traditionally do. So Luke 2, if you want to look in your Bibles, we'll put them up on the screen for you. I'll read them, all right? It says, And at that time there was in Jerusalem a man named Simeon. He was righteous. He was devout. And he was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. Even after 400 years when there, there was, you know, no word. And I would say that eagerly awaiting was a huge understatement. 
Simeon was desperately trusting God to send the Messiah who would save his hurting people, who would, you know, break them free from Rome and all of this other stuff. And, you know, the world would know this was really God's chosen people. And the story goes on and says that the Holy Spirit was upon him and the Holy Spirit revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So again, you have all of these families and the Jewish people and, you know, they're waiting and waiting and waiting. And, and, and Simeon gets a word from God that not only is the Messiah still coming, but in your lifetime. In your lifetime, Simeon, it's going to happen. Story, story goes on. That day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the Lord required, they had a requirement then of Jewish kids that within 40 days they had to go to the temple and there was this ritual and ceremony and all this. So this is what they've done. So Jesus has been born. It's 40 days later. Mary and Joseph are bringing the baby Jesus to the temple. That day he went there. Simeon went to the temple as the Lord required and Simeon was there. And, and, and I thought, you know, if we were making a movie of this, this would, be the mo- this would be the moment, wouldn't it? I mean, if this would be a movie, there would be all the dramatic music would begin to swell, you know. I mean, Simeon would be over here, and we'd know what was happening. And here'd come this couple with a little baby, and, and all of a sudden that their eyes would meet, you, you know, and we, we'd just, da-da, and, and all this kind of thing. And there would be close-up shots of Simeon's face, and there'd be tears, and, you know, it would be so dramatic. After this, I mean, just think about it. All of these years of wondering if God was ever going to come through, and now things are starting to happen. And Simeon gets to see one of God's promises come true with his very eyes. He gets to pick up and hold this Messiah that he had been promised. And here's what Simeon didn't know. Simeon might not have known all the details that would happen as Jesus grew up. Uh, He may have had no idea about the miracles that Jesus was going to perform, or, or that he would be killed, or that he would rise from the dead. But he knew one thing for sure, that God had made a promise to his people. And now he was holding that promise in his arms, all right? After 400 years of silence, God displayed and showed his faithfulness to Simeon and to the rest of the world, and God had come through, and he did it in a way that no one expected him to come through. So Luke continues, Simeon turns to heaven, and he thanks God. He says, thank God thankful I'm, you know, that I live this long. And here's what he said. He said, he took the child in his arms and he praised God saying, sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. And he is a light to reveal God to the nations. And he is the glory of your people, Israel. And Jesus's parents were amazed at what was being said about him. They didn't know anything about this Simeon guy. So, So for Simeon, the long wait was over, okay? We don't see him mentioned anymore after this. We know that the promise was that you'll live long enough to see, uh, to see the, the Messiah, and, and, you know, you won't die before that. Uh, we don't know if, if Simeon died shortly after this. Uh, I'm sure he died a very peaceful death because, remember, he had been promised that he was going to see the Messiah, and he did. So for the rest of his life, however long he had, uh, I'm sure he just walked around with that big goofy grin on his face, you, you know, and, and that, man, God is true and God is right and he keeps his promises and, and God is to believe and, and I'm prom- You know, you guys ever doubt God's going to keep his promises? Simeon would say, come and talk to me. Come and talk to me. And, and Simeon's a part of the Christmas story that you don't see in nativity scenes. And it's, he's one that, that's not talked about very much. But his story tells us that when everyone else gave up hope, that he held on. That when everyone else gave up hope and said it's been so long that he refused to give up because he believed that it would be worth it. He didn't know how it would play out. He didn't know how it was going to happen. He didn't know what it would look like. But he knew that God had made a promise. And that was good enough for him. So he'd wait, no matter how long it took. Great story. All right? Maybe you've never heard it before. I don't know. But what does it have to do with you? And what does it have to do with me at this Christmas time? I think the big takeaway, and I'll say this and then we'll build on it from here, is we can always trust God to be faithful. That He's going to keep every promise that He has ever made to us. And that God will always come through on His promises. Always. Always. 
And I'm guessing for each of you, and I don't know everybody here, and I don't know specifically your life, and especially you guys that are watching online, but I'm guessing that for each of us and that for you guys, there's at least one area of your life that you're hoping God will come through. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's a relationship issue. Maybe you want to obey and be faithful to God, but you just can't seem to get it right. Maybe it's someone close to you and, and a difficult circumstances that, that they're going through and you care about them. And, and while I don't know what it is for you, I, I do know that whatever it is, God is working in your story. God is working in your story. That God has not forgotten you. And that just, just um, you know, because it seems like he's not doing anything. Just because it seems like you're not on his radar at all, the reality is, is that he cares more about each of us and he cares more about you than we can ever know and that he is always at work in your story. He always keeps his promises. I tell people as I've gotten older and look, look at life and, and you know my walk with the Lord and stuff like this, that sometimes when, when you look in the rearview mirror at what you've gone through, it's like 20-20 vision, isn't it? But when you look out the front windshield, it's often very foggy. You know, I don't know what, but you look back, and say, oh, well, that's where God was doing this. But sometimes we don't get that in front of us. And so the encouragement is don't, you know, is that God's going to come through for it. With that in mind, a few things I want you to remember about God coming through, okay? It may not be what you expect. It may not be what you expect. Sometimes I think we say, well, God's kind of let me down. Well, no, he, he did it in a way that you weren't expecting, and you, so you missed it. Most people during the time of Simeon knew about God's promises of a Messiah. But in their minds, because Rome had come in and had taken over militarily, they assumed the Messiah was going to be a military leader. They assumed the Messiah was going to be a political leader. They assumed the Messiah was going to be someone who was going to, to fight off their enemies, and protect the people and, you know, set up Israel as this, you know, world power. And it's easy to imagine what that leader might look like or sound like. I mean, if somebody like that came, I mean, we're expecting an army. We're expecting a leader on a white horse. Uh, we're expecting a sword. Uh, you know, we're expecting, you know, He-Man, Master of the Universe or something. I mean, we're expecting this guy, you know, who's going to come and this is what he's going to do. And they got a baby. They got a baby. And sometimes when God comes through, it may not be what you expect. All right? No one expected the Messiah to look like that. And no one expected the Messiah to come that way. And chances are, when God comes through for you, it may look different from what you expect as well. But let me ask you a question. Do you really want to worship a God who thinks exactly the way that you do? And I don't. I mean, I, I, I want to follow a leader who has better ideas. I want to follow a leader who has better answers. I want to follow a leader who has better solutions than the ones I've come up with that haven't worked. So when God comes through, it may not be what you expect. And, and God may not show up when you expect Him to. <coughs> Paul said it this way in Galatians 4.4, 4, talking about when Jesus came. He said, but when the right time came. When the right time came, God sent His Son, born of a woman. We've been waiting for 400 years. Well, why the wait? Why all of this kind of thing? You know, it's, it's interesting because you can go into the history books and see, see why. I mean, you know, the, I talked to you last week. I said, you know, little bitty outskirt town on the outskirts of the Roman Empire, and yet God sends His Son there. Uh, but politically, it would have been a great time for a new movement to begin. Uh, economically, even though Rome was in charge, things that, that kept everything kind of uh, on an even keel. Uh, there was what was called the Pax Romana, which meant the, the peace of Rome, which means you could travel roads safely uh, because the Roman military kept an eye on the kingdom. Uh, so it would be very easy for Jesus to come and be born and, and, and travel around and preach. It would be very easy for later Paul to become a believer and travel all around the Mediterranean rim and, and, and preach the gospel. Uh, you could, he couldn't have done that 50 years before. He couldn't have done that a hundred years after that. Uh, I mean, you had all of these things going on in the world, and everything was perfect in its timing. And, and so even when things didn't look good, God was arranging the world just the way He wanted it to be, to be the perfect time for Jesus to be born. 
I mean, uh, it, it was quiet to the Jews. It had been quiet. They had no, like I said, no word from God. No prophet standing up saying, this is what God says. And for a long time, and it probably felt to them like God wasn't doing anything. But all this time, he's moving the pieces around. And he's arranging their story. And his timing was perfect, and it always is. And he hadn't forgotten them. In fact, he was paying very close attention. And when the time was right, he acted. When just the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman. And I don't know what your situation, and you guys that are watching online, I don't know what your situation looks like this Christmas. I do not know what you're hoping and praying for. We've already said the holidays can be fun, and we look forward to that. But they can also be crazy and dysfunctional and lonely and difficult and, and, and an un, it can be an unstable time for you. And you can be wondering, yeah, God with us, Emmanuel, but where is God in all of this? Where is God in all of this? Why isn't he doing anything? And if you're asking those questions out loud or, or in your heart of hearts, let me let you know something. Those are normal questions. And it's okay to ask them. It's okay to ask them. But I want you to know that God is doing something. Wise man told me years ago, do not make the mistake of thinking that because God is silent, that he is absent. Do not make the mistake of thinking that because God is silent, he is absent. Don't confuse the silence of God to mean the absence of God. And you can hold on to that hope even when things don't pan out the way you expect them to. Or things are taking longer than you want them to. The promise you can be sure of is the promise of God's presence. The promise of God's presence. God can be trusted to show up. He is with you. One of my little things that, that kind of uh, gets me, and I, I used to pray this way, and, and I hope I've learned, and maybe I can help you here. You ever prayed, don't have to raise your hand, you ever prayed and said, God be with me today? Okay, well, don't do that anymore. <laughs> okay? He already said he's with you. How about praying like this? God, make me aware of your presence today. As I go to my job, make me aware of your presence. As I deal with my family, make me aware of your presence. In the emotions I'm feeling, help me to see your presence in all of these things. Remember Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. We don't have to pray and God said, well, you know, I was kind of busy, but okay, you asked, so I'll, I'll be with you today. You know, but you better ask me again tomorrow. We don't have to do that with God. And through Christmas, we're reminded in the most remarkable way is that, is that God is always going to keep that promise, that He's always with us. He'll never leave us or forsake us. So at this time of the year, where nativity scenes are everywhere, here's what I want you to do. When you pass by one, let it remind you that there was and is a bigger story at Christmas. It's a story of God showing up. It's the story of God working even when no one knows that He's working. It's a story of a God who has a plan. It's a story of a God who has not forgotten you. And even if it doesn't happen when and how you expected it would, God will show up in your life. God will show up. So God's working in your story. And Jen, in her intro, she asked this question, and I wanted to leave it with you today. What would you do differently in your life if you were absolutely certain that God was with you? Simeon could have fallen into the, the, the fits of despair and depression that everyone else did. But he was absolutely certain that God was going to come through for him. And it changed the way he lived his life. So what would you do if you were confident of that, that God was working in your story? What would you do differently? If you were absolutely confident God was working daily in your life, what would you do differently? Would it change the way you think about things? Let me ask you this. Would it change the way you pray? Would it change the way you pray? How would it affect your fears? How would it affect your anxieties to know, you know what? God knows what I'm going through. He knows this anxiety. He knows this fear. He knows what I'm worried about. How would it affect the way that you trust and obey him? How would it affect that? You see, Simeon, remember back to the verse that we read, God said, here's what's going to happen, and it's going to happen before you die. And then there was the one day when the Holy Spirit said, today go to the temple. And he went to the temple that day. See, he was absolutely confident. He didn't know why he had to go to the temple that day. He just knew that God had told him to do it, and he was going to trust and obey God. So, so how would it affect the way that you trust and obey if you were absolutely confident that God was working in your life? 
How would these things change if you were 100% confident that he's with you in his perfect timing? Listen, let me tell you something. You guys that are here, you guys that are watching, God's not forgotten you. He hasn't forgotten you. He knows what's going on with you right now. And let me say this. He is more involved in your life than you could ever imagine. Than you could ever imagine. And he's for you. And he's at work in your story. Let's pray. Father, we thankful for this part of the Christmas story that, that might be new to some. But it's a story of faithfulness, a story of a guy who, who put his trust in God even when it didn't seem like God was doing anything. He said, but God's made a promise. And God's made a promise to each of us that he would never leave us, and that he would never forsake us. He's made individual promises to different ones of us. And, and, and sometimes when it seems like he's, he's not answering it or he's not answering in the way we think he should or in the timing we think he should, it's easy for us to throw up our hands and say, I guess it's not going to happen. So I'll have to figure this life out on my own. I'll have to make these life, life decisions on my own. God, I'm thankful for the testimony of Simeon who said, I'm just going to believe God. And in a time when he wasn't, maybe wasn't ready, when he wasn't thinking it would happen, and in a way he didn't think it would happen, he was able to hold the Messiah in his arms. He held the promise of God in his arms. And so, God, I pray for people in our church and people in our, in our viewing audience that, that have been holding on and praying and been faithful and trusting and obeying. God, I know that one day they're going to hold the answer to your promise in their arms. And God, we look forward to that day. And we do all of that because of Jesus. We talk about Jesus as a baby, but we know that he grew up and he was an amazing example of, uh, of how to live and relate to people. And his teaching was the most ethical the world has ever seen. And then the world turned on him. And they took his life. But he came back to life three days later. And he says, if you'll just believe, if you'll just believe. And God, we know that he keeps his promises because of that. So we're thankful for Jesus today. And we look forward to those promises being answered in the future. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Breaking through the silence. With glory in the highest The hope of all creation Resting in his mother's arms A song on the horizon Ringing through the heavens A long-awaited savior They come to set the captives free Come to set the captives free. Come set us free. Burdens 
breathe in forgiveness if you need freedom he's where you find it if you need freedom yeah he's where you find it yeah he's where you find it Thank you.